that was easy. I was going to make a series on the best games out there with socialist or communist themes, but I might have to cancel the series if they're all this easy to find. Well, I suppose we'd better play it just to be sure. Hello and welcome to my newly rebranded channel, Marxist Media. I've been interested in leftism and politics in general for a long time, but I'm not some super well-read expert who can really come up with any original insights, like some channels that don't intend to be sitting here ranting about the latest issues of the day. So, how can I do anything that people want to watch? Well, I thought that one thing I could do is to combine that with one of my other great loves, video games, and maybe some other stuff later on. I'm not claiming that anything on my channel is going to change the world, but at least it might introduce people to something new or give them a new perspective on some game that they love. It might even give people something to think about if I can come up with anything interesting to say. Although, something tells me this game isn't going to give me much to work with. I'll be rating games based on their gameplay and on my perception of their socialist content, whether they're explicitly Marxist, can be interpreted as class conscious, or are just based around the USSR with no political context. Speaking of which, I do so love all these potato jokes in the broken English. It's all very in Soviet Russia X does Y. Those kooky commies. Yeah, and the gameplay of pressing one button over and over until you die of boredom does capture effectively the utter nihilistic meaninglessness of life under an oppressive Stalinist collective clicking farm. I have to applaud the rich social commentary. While I might not agree with the message, much like Papers, Please, I do have to appreciate the ambition of the developers attempting to brand this story seamlessly into the, uh... Wait, what? Oh, that's just what the gameplay of these games is like normally? Well, in that case, forget it. I can only enjoy a game with this little depth if it's artsy and pretentious. That said, much to my shame, I will say that I do know this is actually more complicated than their previous outing, Adventure Capitalist, so perhaps Hyper Hippo Games do support a workers' movement after all. Plus, with a little cash to buy some gems or diamonds or whatever the fuck, I can skip ahead without doing any real work, just like life under capitalism. Although, I'm not sure that's supposed to be ironic either, now that I come to think of it. <sighs> okay, you know what? Even playing it ironically, this is more unrewarding and mind-numbingly depressive than life usually is when I'm not playing video games, so I think we should just move on. Look, do I even need to rate this one? This is basically a joke video anyway to get started, but fine. I guess the gameplay scores are 2 out of 10 because it is technically functional and marginally more complex than most clicker games. As for socialist content, the Yakov Shminov stick has been pretty much dead for decades, but you know, at least it doesn't outright call socialism evil like some games I could mention, so why not? I'll give it a 2 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me in the next episode when I hopefully move on to an actual game.